Hi everyone. Today let us talk about Strider, part two, the final part of Strider. In the first part of Strider, we talked about uh, uh, the questions that uh, are being asked, and I, I try to give an orientation: what kind of questions are being asked, and what how you should try to answer this. We talked about acute epiglottitis, laryngotracheobronchitis. Uh, this is what I thought is what the examiner is expecting from you. And then we talked about the definition of Strider, what the types of Strider. Okay. Now coming to uh, the Strider part two in this, we'll talk about the etiology, the various causes of Strider. In the management, we are going to talk about the history, what history, what uh, questions you need to ask. Physical examination, what you need to look, uh, radiography, what investigations you need to get them done. Uh, laryngoscopy, bronchoscopy, esophagoscopy to find out. Again, to find out the cause of Strider. Now, all this uh, basically to find out the site and then to find out the cause of Strider so that you can treat the patient. Okay, So the treatment is the final part. Coming to the causes of Strider. Uh, the causes of Strider are basically inflammatory, neoplastic, traumatic, neurogenic and miscellaneous. So I couldn't come up with a better mnemonic international music number. I stands for inflammatory, N stands for neoplastic, T stands for traumatic, N stands for neurogenic and M stands for miscellaneous. So coming to inflammatory causes. Inflammatory causes means there is an infection causing the inflammation or the swelling. When there is an infection, you can expect that the onset is acute. Yeah, the child or uh, the strider is not going to come over a period of weeks. It's going to be a period of uh, hours, sometimes hours or days. And the duration is going to be short. Because of the inflammation, the, because of the swelling, the child is going to present to you in a short duration. So maybe three days onset, one day, two days, so many one or two hours, the baby was fine in the morning and finally started developing strider uh, from the last two, three hours only. So we came. Okay, in the inflammatory, we come, what are the causes we can see are the laryngotracheobronchitis group. We talked about this acute epiglottitis. So these are the most uh, common uh, and epiglottitis is having an acute, very rapid progression uh, and laryngotracheobronchitis is the most common cause of airway obstruction, infectious airway obstruction in children. Then we have retropharyngeal abscess that is mostly because of a separation of a retropharyngeal lymph node. Diphtheria. Diphtheria is mostly localized, most of the times we see that the diphtheria is localized onto the tonsils but sometimes the diphtheria can go to the larynx and that's where the child is going to have strider noisy breathing, tuberculosis of the larynx. Coming to neoplastic, uh, neoplastic uh, causes of uh, strider. Neoplastic means there is a swelling, there is a growth that occurring, so that can be benign or malignant. Most of the cases in a child, we expect it to be benign, so, so the onset will be gradual. So uh, the slowly progressive kind of uh, disease and the disease is going to be longer duration. Our child had uh, uh, this noisy breathing since a uh, few days or a few weeks and now it has progressed rapidly after the onset of a cold acute rhinitis. This, this may be a presentation, the, ch the, 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 ch the child's parents may come to you. Then juvenile, nasal, juvenile multiple papillomatosis, uh, hemangiomas. Juvenile multiple papillomatosis is caused by human papilloma virus. So multiple papillomas will be present all over the larynx causing strider and respiratory distress, hemangiomas. These are slow growing tumors and quite rare. Tumors of the trachea, tumors in the trachea, these are also quite rare. Masses in the neck or mediastinum may be because of lymphoma and such other things which are uh, which are going to compress the uh, 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 compress the trachea. Uh, so in this we can just uh, go a little bit into it. Laryngotracheobronchitis, what is the strider? Strider is biphasic, okay? And acute epiglottitis, this is inspiratory. Retropharyngeal abscess is going to be inspiratory strider. Diphtheria, if it's involved in the larynx, it is going to be biphasic kind of strider. Tuberculosis, also larynx, is going to be biphasic kind of strider, okay? Juvenile multiple papillomatosis is biphasic kind of strider, okay? Hemangioma, subglot is most common, so it is going to be biphasic kind of strider. Tumors of the trachea, if it is in the cervical trachea, if it is in the cervical trachea, you are going to have a uh, biphasic kind of strider. If it is in the intrathoracic trachea, a mass in the mediastinum causing compression of the 
uh, intrathoracic trachea, you may have a expiratory, expiratory kind of stridor. So as we saw, most of the cases are either inspiratory or biphasic. Here it is expiratory. Okay. Now traumatic. Traumatic. They will give a history of trauma. Patient had a road traffic accident. Had a hit. Was playing with uh, playing cricket and the ball hit him. Cricket ball hit his neck, uh, throat. Uh, so there was injury to the larynx and then the, uh, the child will going to have edema and then he's going to have strider or there may be a fracture of the larynx and then the uh, child can have swelling hematoma uh, and that that can cause strider okay so this is going to be sudden onset okay uh, it is not going to be gradual onset short duration suppose the foreign body trachea foreign body trachea there is a classical history that we can sometimes uh, uh, elicit from the patient the baby was uh, uh, holding something in his mouth, so maybe a whistle or something, and he was running around. And suddenly he uh, stepped over a stone and suddenly fell down. And <gasps> he suddenly had a deep inspiration, and the uh, the foreign body went directly into the trachea. <clears throat> so this is the kind of history. Then there was a sudden, uh, there was a there was a bout of cough. There was a bout of cough, uh, and he was trying to cough it out. And then after some time, it settled down. Okay, if it is an inorganic foreign body like a plastic or something, it is not going to elicit so much of reaction in the lungs. It can be silent for quite a long time. But uh, if it is a organic foreign body like a, like a, like a groundnut seed, so this is something we can easily we can get many times groundnut seed that is going into the lungs, into the probably the secondary bronchi, and it is going to cause pneumonia. So it is going to be silent for some time, and then the child is going to have cough, not reducing not responding to treatment then you get an x-ray you will have pneumonia and uh, the, you can't see the uh, this groundnut seed on the x-ray so you will have to go for bronchoscopy to come to a diagnosis foreign body esophagus this is quite a rare thing but sometimes you there may be a, some uh, bolus of uh, uh, non-vegetarian like chicken or mutton got stuck in the esophagus and causing compression of the trachea laryngeal edema because of trauma uh, the, that can be burns is also part of trauma post intubation that is iatrogenic cause of uh, laryngeal edema post injury uh, uh, post injury that is after injury uh, there may be uh, some kind of fibrosis that can happen because of injury that can cause tracheal or subglottic stenosis so traumatic causes injury to the larynx foreign body trachea foreign body esophagus laryngeal edema as in burns and post intubation which is an iatrogenic cause Causing post injury, causing fibrosis and stenosis can also cause strider. Neurogenic, vocal cord palsy. Vocal cord palsy we have many types, but we will let us talk about bilateral abductor palsy, inability to abduct. So it is in an abducted stage. They are they're close to each other, cannot breathe. So vocal cord palsy uh, can cause uh, strider. Miscellaneous tetanus, tetanus caused by clostridium tetany. Uh, there is muscle spasms all over the body now uh, and all the muscles of the body so that can cause strider okay so these are the causes of strider let us have a quick revision so inflammatory uh, this infections that we talked about acute epiglottitis laryngotracheobronchitis diphtheria etc neoplastic neoplastic multiple juvenile multiple papillomatosis uh, hemangiomas masses of the trachea lymphoma kind of things in the mediastinum Traumatic because trauma to the larynx or foreign body comes under larynx, uh, comes under traumatic. Uh, then burns, laryngeal edema caused burn because of burns, because of intubation. Uh, and then there can be fibrosis because of post intubation or post injury. You can have strider. Neurogenic vocal cord palsy can cause miscellaneous like tetanus. So if you can write down this one, you will get your marks. I want to include this also because, but in our case, most of them, he is not talking about uh, congenital causes of strider, but uh, let me just mention it. Laryngoma, congenital causes of strider, one is laryngomalacia, where you have an omega-shaped epiglottis, supraglottic involvement, vocal cords are normal, uh, voice will be normal, laryngeal web, so there will be some kind of uh, incomplete canalization of the larynx. It has a concave upper border and there is a web in between the two vocal cords. Subglottic stenosis, congenital cause of subglottic stenosis where the subglottis couldn't uh, recanalize properly. So there is uh, subglottic narrowing. Subglottic hemangioma, there is a growth of, because of benign growth by blood vessels. It is slowly, slowly, slowly growing and causing uh, strider, vocal cord paralysis because of birth trauma. 
they also include uh, tongue and jaw abnormalities in uh, uh, strider but uh, strictly speaking it comes under stutter uh, when there is tongue and jaw abnormalities or maybe because uh, the tongue can fall backwards onto the supraglottis and then can, can cause uh, block the airway causing strider as in micrognathia or macroglossia acquired causes of strider acquired causes of strider can be afebrile causes of strider or febrile causes this is how we can easily differentiate acquired causes uh, let's go to fe febrile first we have talked about acute epiglottitis acute laryngotracheal bronchitis we talked about diphtheria we talked about retropharyngeal abscess infectious mononucleosis and peritonsillar abscess are also indicate are also given in cases of acquired causes of strider when they involve the larynx Juvenile multiple papillomatosis, a febrile cause, injury, foreign body, laryngeal edema because of burns. We have talked about it. Adenotonsillar hypertrophy uh, causes stutter mostly, but I don't know how it can cause strider, but uh, this is included in the textbook. Okay. Now, coming to management. Management. How do you manage this case? Management, always the first, uh, first uh, tool that we have is history. Taking a proper history, most of our problems will be solved. Uh, time of onset. So, what are the questions you need to ask the patient or the patient's uh, attender or the mother or the father of the patient? What is the time of onset? When did this problem start? So, by that you will come to know whether it's a congenital cause or acquired cause. Suppose the baby is seven years old and he says that the two years history, the two hours history, two hours history, then it is definitely not congenital. Okay. Suppose it is a six month old baby and he presents with uh, uh, strider noisy breathing on prone position that is that you can think of laryngomalacia okay so like that you can come to uh, diagnosis uh, having a direction where you want to go so first one is the time of onset time of onset will give you the whether it's a congenital or acquired cause mode of onset mode of onset it is sudden or gradual sudden onset as in a case of foreign body edema uh, maybe even uh, acute epiglottitis you can put it here because it is having a f uh, sudden onset uh, to some extent it is not like really sudden sudden is always uh, anaphylaxis anaphylaxis can also come this anaphylactic edema can also come under the sudden onset as in a case of uh, you know uh, allergy to something uh, foreign body is always sudden edema uh, because of burns or can also be sudden gradual and progressive as in a case of subglottic hemangioma and juvenile papilloma Duration, duration, how long has it been there? Short duration as in foreign body edema infections, long as in laryngeal stenosis, subglottic hemangioma. So you anyhow you ask the patient, what is your chief complaint? My chief complaint is tried. How long is it present? It is present from the last two hours, from the last two days, from the last two months, like that they are going to give you the history. And is it gradually progressing? Is it increasing, uh, slowly increasing? Or uh, yesterday he was fine and suddenly has uh, started developing. Yesterday you had a little bit of difficulty, but suddenly it has increased rapidly progressive as in acute epiglottitis. So like that you can ask the uh, the routine history that you ask, you know. What is the chief complaint? What is the duration? Whether it is slowly progressive or gradually progressive? And then you ask relation to feeding because the trachea and the esophagus are close to each other, whether there is any relation to feeding. Uh, painful swallowing or dinophagia is seen in acute epiglottitis. It is. It will be seen in peritonsillar abscess. It will be seen in uh, acute tonsillitis. It can be seen in diphtheria. Definitely in diphtheria. If there is a history of aspiration, or this is something that happens uh, mostly in congenital causes, sub or even in uh, young children, laryngeal paralysis, where the vocal cords are not able to adduct bilateral adductor palsy. Vocal cords are far away from each other. So there is a chance for aspiration uh, also in foreign body esophagus where the food will not be able to go into the esophagus because it is blocking the, the food can go into the uh, trachea. So foreign body esophagus aspiration history of aspiration is very important. Also in congenital causes you can have in uh, uh, tracheoesophageal fistula, tracheoesophageal fistula can also have aspiration. Cyanotic spells, cyanotic spells means that child is turning blue, child is turning blue which means uh, that this strider is severe, this strider is severe, it needs immediate resuscitation. Uh, transfer the patient to directly to the operation theater for tracheostomy. Uh, if possible, intubation. If not possible, tracheostomy. So, cyanotic spells means uh, this is severe. Uh, the oxygen saturation is not being maintained. Uh, history of any foreign body. Baby was playing with some uh, coin or baby was playing with... Uh, uh, some small whistle or a, or a cap of a pen and then suddenly he had this bout of cough that I just now explained. So that kind of history can tell you that it can be foreign body 
bronchus foreign body bronchus okay so that too is one thing laryngeal trauma because of blunt injury as in uh, while playing or any uh, road traffic accident okay intubation endoscopy post intubation post endoscopy can the baby can develop laryngeal trauma then the baby can develop edema and then finally you can have strider okay this is sometimes seen post intubation okay uh, post intubation even in normal cases like uh, tonsillectomy also we can sometimes see if the if the if the uh, thing is very narrow if the glottic chink is narrow because of a very uh, rough intubation okay now coming to physical examination that was a history we took the history uh, uh, now coming to physical examination you look for whenever there is a strider you you can say that there is this, there is narrowing of the rest of the airway and is the narrowing causing any respiratory distress that is what is the point if there is retraction of the suprasternal notch sternum intercostal spaces epigastrium you can be sure that this is quite a severe thing if there is only strider with minimal retraction it is not severe not severe when there is minimal uh, minimal retraction of the suprasternal notch retraction of the sternum sternal retraction means it is quite severe intercostal spaces retraction epigastric retraction so these are uh, pointers uh, to, to say how fast you want to act uh, do you have enough time do you need to call the anesthetist do you need to shift the patient to the operation theater okay strider now that was uh, to know about the severity by doing the strider now you look into you observe the child whether the uh, strider is inspiratory expiratory or biphasic if it is inspiratory we talked about it it is either in the supraglottis uh, whether it is either in the supraglottis or in the pharynx uh, then uh, if it is expiratory means it is in the intrathoracic trachea intrathoracic trachea then uh, primary and secondary bronchi uh, <clears throat> biphasic when you have it in the cervical trachea larynx and subglottis okay so these things uh, will indicate where is the site of obstruction and depending on the site of obstruction now you know the little bit uh, knowledge about the site of obstruction you know how long is it the duration and how sudden is it you can come to diagnosis whether it's an inflammatory kind of a disease you are suspecting or is it a neoplastic kind of disease or is it a foreign body or is it a trauma you will have some idea by the time you have come to this stage now associated characteristics of strider a patient who is also having snoring also having snoring so there is the, there is the some kind of pathology that is infecting that is affecting the nose nasopharynx and the larynx so this is some uh, huge thing that you have to deal faster or there is only snoring and the patient is thinking of it as you thought somebody said it was strider but it is actually snoring gurgling sound muffled voice hot potato voice we see in peritonsillar abscess uh, peritonsillar abscess so these are associated features with strider Uh, by this you can come to know whether the pathology is affecting only the larynx and the trachea or it is also involving the other areas okay suppose it was a uh, ingestion of uh, some acid acid ingestion or some other ingestion which has caused the entire thing to swell or is it an anaphylactic shock where there is uh, also you will have uh, uh, sometimes lip edema also and also edema causing edema of the larynx causing strider hoarse cry when the vocal cords are involved then you can be clear hoarse cry means vocal cords are involved then there is a laryngeal cause at the level of the vocal cords expiratory wheeze is there you can say it is bronchial obstruction there is a foreign body in the bronchus causing bronchial uh, uh, expiratory wheeze okay and then coming to uh, in fever uh, whether the child is having any fever or not fever when there is fever is there your life becomes easier right uh, what are the febrile causes febrile causes are acute epigonal epiglottitis laryngotracheal bronchitis diphtheria peritonsillar abscess like this the 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 uh, differential diagnosis becomes very small now this is mostly in prone position is increasing the strider or not this is mostly we can ask the case where the if the presentation is in the early 3 to 6 months of age when the baby is child uh, child uh, Uh, is very small and you think of congenital causes okay uh, laryngomalacia micrognathia macro uh, glossia innominated artery compression these are the four uh, condition which causes increase in strider in prone position matlab putting the child with the face down okay face down prone position uh, so laryngomalacia because uh, in the prone position uh the floppy loose epiglottis falls on the trachea and causes it to uh, cause further increase in the blockage 
micrographia, macrographia, and innominate artery compression. Sequential auscultation with unaided ear and with a scope. Uh, first, you first you hear with your ear, and then you use the stethoscope. You put the stethoscope over the nose. You put the stethoscope over the throat. You throat uh, in the larynx area, in the chest area. Then you find out. Then with this, you can find out approximately where is the site of the stride. Uh, then after you have taken done all this, you go for examination to exclude the local pathology. You examine the nose, tongue, jaw, pharynx, and larynx, the upper parts where you can see with your headlight. Or with a touch sometimes, nose, tongue, jaw, pharynx and larynx, examination of these things to exclude any local pathology. Indirect laryngoscopy can be done in adults, though this can exclude vocal cord growth, okay, vocal cord growth, papillomas, sometimes there was, there can be a foreign body stuck in between the two vocal cords, so these things can, indirect laryngoscopy is possible in adult, but direct laryngoscopy in infants and children, okay. Nowadays, flexible laryngoscopy we are getting. We use a fiber optic flexible endoscopy, endoscopy to go from the nose, we go into the just behind the uh, uvula and from there because of the excellent uh, uh, magnification and illumination we can see the vocal cords, we can see the glottic chain, we can see the epiglottis, we can see the postricard area, we can see the uh, trachea also. So this can be done. Mm. Now, next coming to radiography. Radiography. Uh, very important role uh, uh, x-ray plays uh, in this uh, strider case we take an x-ray chest anterior posterior view and lateral views and x-ray neck anterior posterior and lateral views but now uh, we have already talked about it x-ray neck uh, we can see thumb sign thumb sign we can see in acute epiglottitis acute epiglottitis you can see steeple sign steeple sign in laryngotracheal bronchitis like that a uh, chest we can see whether there is a lung one part of the lung is collapsed whether there is any uh, increase in the size of the lung uh, hyperinflation whether uh, whether there are any neck node whether mediastinal lymph nodes uh, what is the uh, okay the various lung fields you can see uh, cd scan when you are suspecting a mediastinal mass this is going to help you esophagogram with lip Lipoidal is useful when you are suspecting that there is any communication between the trachea and the esophagus. You uh, give uh, uh, esophagogram into the trachea, into the esophagus, and if they, you can see if there is any connections between atresia of the esophagus. It will tell you whether the atresia of esophagus with tracheoesophageal fistula, tracheobronchial fistula, aberrant vessels uh, pressing over the uh, pressing over the esophagus. Only if you suspect this, you can go with esophagogram. Angiography if you are suspecting any aberrant vessels innominate artery compression for example okay then coming to direct laryngoscopy after all this is done uh, the thing that we have in our hands that a ENT surgeon's hands are a direct laryngoscopy with, with without anesthesia so before anesthesia can we really do something uh, you want to you want to know the cause of it so in children's and infants you place the child and uh, do a direct laryngoscopy with a direct laryngoscope uh, with, with, with your eyes or using a camera uh, you always keep a tracheostomy tray ready keep the intubation set ready so that if the child suddenly develops any laryngeal spasm or something you should be ready to intubate or you should be ready to uh, do a tracheostomy don't do it casually okay so this will help you to find out the cause of uh, strider if it is there in the larynx okay the best then well, if still all this you have done you have taken a history you have uh, done examination okay and then you have done an indirect laryngoscopy you have done a flexible laryngoscopy um, uh, you have done a chest radiograph everything and now you don't know still you don't know what is uh, what is the problem what is causing strider uh, such cases are rare i guess nowadays but yeah uh, if such cases are there you go for bronchoscopy because what is left now is the bronchus only bronchus and uh, trachea under the trachea you can't see with a flexible laryngoscope bronchoscopy is done first whenever you want to go to find out the you are just going blindly you don't know what is the cause you want to determine the cause bronchoscopy is done first this is done to find out if there is an astral obstruction from the subglottis to the bronchi okay so there is uh, this is the vocal cords from there there is the subglottis and then there is the trachea cervical trachea and then that goes into the intrathoracic trachea prime the right-sided bronchus, left-sided primary bronchus, secondary bronchi, uh, primary bronchi, this is the main bronchus, 
primary bronchi, secondary bronchi. You can go to the secondary bronchi and see why why are you trying to do this? Because if the most of the if all this is there, you have cleared the from the nose, throat, jaw abnormalities. Okay, and the larynx also you have seen now. If the patient is having strider, it means that there is some foreign body in the bronchus or there is some mass growing in the bronchus. So to do that, now you're going to do that. You're going to look at it. Now, first thing is, if there is any mass, you take a biopsy. If there is a foreign body, you remove it. If there is any pus there, you try to remove an aspirate, which can help you to do culture sensitivity to determine what is a good antibiotic in this case and why it has not resolved with uh, empirical therapy. Okay. After bronchoscopy, uh, the patient is intubated because now the work of the bronchus is over and uh, the wor work at the level of the bronchus is over and now you intubate the patient and now you do a proper detailed examination of the larynx and esophagus, larynx and esophagus. Uh, the hidden areas of the larynx can be seen with direct laryngoscopy. So what are the hidden areas? Infrahyoid, epiglottis, anterior commissure, subglottic area. Okay, so these areas can be seen if there has if there is any cause of strider, esophagus, if there is any uh, foreign body or if there is any bolus which is compressing the trachea, you can find out over here. So, and then while coming out, what is important is uh, when you intubate the patient, when you intubate the patient, both the vocal cords will become in cadaveric position. You will not know the vocal cord mobility. When you are coming out, you keep your eye on the vocal cords and when the patient is coming out, he will cough or he will cry and then the vocal cords will move and then that's how you can find out whether their vocal cord mobility is there when the patient is coming out on uh, of anesthesia to see their movements. Okay, now after all this, we have come to the diagnosis and when the diagnosis is made, treatment of the exact cause can be made. So. All that exercise that we did, you know, you took a proper history, you did a good physical examination, then you do a good radiography, you you performed a CT scan also if needed, then then you did a direct laryngoscopy, uh, then with under anesthesia, under general anesthesia, you did a bronchoscopy, you did a laryngoscopy, you did a esophagoscopy, this is called triple endoscopy, I guess. Okay. And then uh, after all this, you have come to a diagnosis, your diagnosis is confirmed and then you give the treatment of the cause. So this is how I feel that you should write an answer when such a question comes, when they broadly ask what is the management of such and such a management of strider, what is the causes of strider, what is the types of strider, okay. But when a particular case is being asked, the, you can say, okay, this is a case uh, presenting short duration, a like few hours, a seven year old boy, I think the diagnosis is acute epiglottitis. So in acute epiglottitis, these are the features that are seen. How do you manage this case? Uh, I take a history, I take a history, I ask all this and I then I do the examination where I'm going to find that uh, uh, um, inflamed edematous epiglottis and then because that is caused by uh, Haemophilus influenza type B, we are going to go with antibiotics, ceftriaxone, sulbactam, and we are going to have other things like steroids, intubation. Intubation tracheostomy uh, is needed. This uh, presentation was mostly when you don't know what is the cause of strider, and all this was towards finding out the cause of the strider. Okay, thank you so much for the patient listening. If you have any doubts or any queries, please put it in the comments so that we can make any changes if needed. Thank you.